Hey everyone, it's time for Good Week Israel. Well, we'll give you ILTV's latest positive highlights, so get ready to smile because coming up, after a devastating oil spill on Israel's shores, these little turtles are finally heading home. New students are arriving from abroad to study here in Israel for the first time. And finally, a glimpse at the future with flying cars by aeronautics. After a devastating oil spill contaminating the Mediterranean, killing marine life, the sea is recovering and some of its residents are finally getting to return home. This one's for the turtles. Take a look. A handful of endangered sea turtles have been returned to Israel's Mediterranean waters after surviving an oil spill that required they undergo weeks of cleaning, including gastric purges with mayonnaise. <laughs> The mid-February disaster, blamed by Israeli authorities on crude released from a passing ship, blighted coasts as far north as Lebanon and Gaza to the south. Wildlife casualties included 29 green or loggerhead turtles that washed up dead. I think this is a kind of alarm for all of us. Uh, if we were going uh, to bring more and more ships and more and more naval tools, uh, vessels to our ports, uh, the risk of another uh, spill like that, contamination, is enormous. And I think the, uh, if we're not going to take care of the security of those ships, we're going to suffer a lot. But three of each endangered breed were rescued by the Israel Nature and Parks Authority, whose rangers used cotton buds and wipes to painstakingly dislodge tar from the plate-sized animals' eyes, noses, and mouths. Tube-fed mayonnaise also served to expel oil that had been swallowed or inhaled by the snappers, the authority said. The turtles, whose sex was not yet clear given their young age, were lowered off a boat into the Mediterranean, some five kilometers from shore, a distance the rangers hoped would spare them danger from predators, fishermen, or marine traffic. They are very special animals, and they are in a position of extinction. So every turtle is going back to the sea and survive, and will survive, and bring back more turtles uh, to us. Maybe we'll prevent the extinction and we'll let our children and grandchildren to see sea turtles uh, in the future. Hannah Rifkin, ILTV. The future of urban air mobility is here. With cities around the world at their max for congestion, Israeli aviation company Urban Aeronautics is taking to the air, providing the ultimate solution for saving time and even lives. This self-proclaimed car-sized aircraft offering safe and quick transport with the ability to navigate and land in locations that no other passenger aircraft has ever been capable of until now. What if cars could fly? Thanks to the leading Israeli aviation company, Urban Aeronautics, flying cars are about to become a reality. It is a car-sized urban aircraft that may revolutionize the future of air mobility in a safe, quiet, sustainable, and profitable way. The ILTV team had to go and see the City Hawk with their own eyes. Haran Ben Eliyahu, the Vice President of Business Development of Urban Aeronautics, took us on a tour to give us a deeper insight of this incredible invention. This is actually the first prototype that the, our founder, Dr. Rafi Oeli, built in Tel Aviv in his apartment in 2002. And then he took it out and proved that the technology actually works. That's why he named the company Urban Aeronautics, because he built a thing that could fly people around cities, in and out, uh, from rooftop to rooftop. We manufacture everything ourselves. You can see some of the components are from carbon fiber. This is very strong and very light. You can feel for yourself. We also manufacture the blades, which is a very unique, there's only a handful of companies that can create this kind of product. You can see our actually flying prototype, which is a one-ton vehicle with a, a jet engine and two ducted fans, and already flew 300 test flights here in Israel. This is just 80% uh, of the size of the actual product. The, the City Hawk, which we envision to be the air taxi, is gonna be 20% uh, bigger. And to tell us more about their vision of aviation transportation is the CEO, Nimrod Golan Yanai. Urban Aeronautics' vision is to lead 
the um, new future of urban mobility. The City Hawk revolution is going to be introduced to the public in phases. Probably the first use cases are going to be EMS, emergency medical services, where you can access an, a car accident or any other incident in minutes. Then to be followed up with airport shuttle, for example, taking off from JFK to Manhattan. Then to be followed with air taxi, full scale utilization, you know, for the public mobility as a service. City Hawk is equipped with groundbreaking internal rotor fan craft technology. When you have an aircraft that has no external rotors, then suddenly you can introduce aviation into the urban environment. This state-of-the-art technology brings the dream of air mobility to everyone and everywhere. When we develop the City Hawk, we do not aim for, you know, just the rich people. We aim for all of us to use it. So it's gonna be pretty much the same cost as taking an Uber all the way from JFK to Manhattan. And topping it off, Urban Aeronautics uses eVTOL twin engines and future eVTOL models of City Hawk will run on hydrogen, known to be a completely sustainable power source. We're going to be the first eVTOL in the world that is going to use hydrogen fuel cell to fly. The Israeli-based aviation company, in its first stage of manufacturing, now preparing to develop prototypes and is set to be ready for production in three to five years. We see a lot of movements around the financial markets towards eVTOL developers like ourselves. Now it's the perfect time to step into this domain. Thanks to Urban Aeronautics, the future is already taking off. Through the Investination platform, you can join the growth of Israel's up-and-coming startup technology. Investination is an investment platform developed by the Basadno Investment Group. Basadno affords its investors the opportunity to invest in some of the most promising startups. Visit investination.com to learn more. Moving along, well, we have certainly come a long way, and after nearly eight years of development, the Israeli Air Force is getting an upgrade for its aircraft arsenal. An advanced intelligence gathering aircraft called the Oron. Using state-of-the-art radar system and artificial intelligence, the new spy jet can receive vast amounts of data from enemy territory. The plane, manufactured by Israeli aerospace industries, is expected to begin operations in the coming days with the AIF's 122 Nachshon Squadron. Now, in another story, exciting news. H&M's sister chain and other stories planning to open multiple stores in Israel in the very near future. Israel expanding its fashion style, announcing on Sunday plans to open two stores of H&M's sister chain and other stories. The store began a supposedly more luxurious alternative to H&M. And while prices are a bit higher than H&M's, customers are getting what they pay for since the chain uses mostly natural fabrics. Meanwhile, and other stories also planning on selling skincare products and makeup in stores, announces the idea to have a giant sink inside each location for customers to test out the products. As for the actual ribbon cutting, the company's franchise in Israel match retail, saying it will open the stores in the fourth quarter of 2021. If you're tired of making the same old salad, then listen up because we will be learning how to make a delicious California Cobb salad with kosher.com. Take a look. Joining us today is Abby Wallace. Hi. We're going to be making a springtime salad, and I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited to be here because I'm not a foodie, and I have I've never done this before. You're doing great already. <laughs> Abby is from California. I am. I'm from LA originally. I'm, I'm from the Valley, and there we have tons of salads, like 
Chavez is at least like five or six salads yum. for the meal. Yum, I love that. I might have to move to California. I'm a big <laughs> salad person myself. This is called the California Cobb Salad. Where, Ooh. yeah, and, and in California, we are obsessed with color. Well, especially as me as an artist, I love color and your salad has to be super colorful. Okay, that's great. So we're gonna start with all of the red leaf and green leaf lettuce. You wanna have like, you know, a bunch of different combinations of lettuces. So I'm gonna tear the lettuce. You always wanna tear your lettuce because if you cut it, lettuce this goes brown. You know what I always find, Naomi, is that most of these salads that are out there, they always call for either romaine or iceberg. And so what I love about this one is just look, look at all that it's, color. It's, it's beautiful. Just, okay, so we're gonna do the cucumbers, Naomi. Is there a special way to cut the cucumbers? So <laughs> do you like rounds or do you like so I personally, this is what I do. I cut it straight down the center, and then I then flatten it. Yes, and then I cut them like that. That's how That's I. That's actually it. a safe way to cut because it's flat and it's not rolling around. So okay. it's actually safer to cut that way and just with your, my knife. Look at her, super fancy. We're going to get the tomatoes. Tomatoes. It's my show. It's tomatoes. I love these different colored tomatoes. Look at that. Yes. Yeah, see, because they're an array of colors and different shades and it's just gonna add so much beauty to the, the salad. Mm. When I moved to New York about, oh my gosh, 15 years ago, oh my gosh, I noticed that everybody's tables, when they would serve on Shabbos, it was always brown food. <laughs> I hate to say this, but you have the kugels, you have the schnitzels, you have the chillin. When people come to my house, the first thing that they say when they come to my meal is like, oh my God, how many salads do you have? <laughs> I do the same thing, I have a table full of salads. Yes. In Australia also we use a lot of the local produce that's very seasonal. Yeah. And we grew up had, no, with no cookles and just a ton of salads. Yeah, so it's, it, I have my California cob salad, I'll have a potato salad, I'll have a corn salad, I'll have a cabbage salad. I mean like, we're talking an array of salads and people just come and they just, they, they leave the table and they're like, oh my God, I feel so full but so light. You can't have a California cob salad without avocado. avocado. <laughs> okay, so how do you tell the avocado is done? I have no idea. So you want to like give it a little bit of pressure, and if it gives gives in a little, then you know it's good, nice and soft. I'm putting in my knife. I'm turning around the edges with a pit in the middle. Okay, let's hope that this is going to be a beautiful one. I'm just going to give it a little twist. <laughs> okay, I take my knife and I give it a good whack in the middle, and then I turn oh, it. Wow and it comes right out like that. Red onion time. Okay, I love I love red onions. I think they're so pretty. How do you do that? Okay, now just watch, wait. It's gonna go into that salad. It's gonna like totally transform the color. Oh, that is beautiful. Look, it's really coming together so I nicely. I told you, it looks really, really pretty. Red onions. <laughs> okay. What's next, what's next? Okay, this is the best part and I can't wait to show it to you. We are going to transform this salad into next level you have no clue. Okay, I'm very this excited. This is like what the best I, part. What goes in next? Okay, we're going to take Ooh. the turkey, which you're like, what? We're going to fry it up. Ooh. And we are going to have... <laughs> it's gonna be so good! <laughs> By the way, the more turkey you put in there, the better. Really? Yes. Like this? Now, most people would just put it in a salad like this. Raw? No, 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 no. No, we have no, to... no, 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 no. Look at this. This is beautiful. In California, where I've eaten Cobb salads before, they will put pastrami and they will put, you know, so corned beef. You, you can put you different can kinds of deli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, but fun. it has to be fried up. That's the whole shtickle mickle. So okay. all this just goes in. Yeah, goes in. And just make sure that you pull off the pieces. Oh, you can already smell it. Okay, so now let this just sit for a few minutes and let it get like nice and crunchy. Okay, they're like turkey croutons. So we've got the salad dressing ingredients in front of us. Yeah, I'm just tossing this a little bit so that it doesn't burn. Sorry. Where, where's, where's the vinegar, Abby? There is no vinegar because in Chateau Wolin, my husband hates vinegar. Really? We also don't like any mayo in any of our dressings. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be Fun really fact. interesting. <laughs> Fun fact. Okay, so what goes in here first? Okay, so we're going to put gonna... in, we're going to put in the honey. Okay, now I'm gonna add in some yellow mustard. Yeah, perfect, good. Great. Oh, here, take this. Okay, and then you're gonna put in oil. Do I whisk and add oil? Yeah, whisk and add the oil. Perfect. I'm gonna get Keep a really going. good emulsification here. 
Okay, Perfect. say when. That's good. Oh, that's great. Okay, and then some garlic powder, black pepper, and then a little bit of salt. Garlic powder. Ooh. I love garlic, so I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> How is that? Okay, let's try it. It's so simple, but it's so delicious. But even though, like, most traditional salad dressings have the balance of oil to acid, yeah. right? And mustard, this just has the mustard because there is vinegar in mustard, a little yes, vinegar. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, that's yes. it. And you, you feel it here. It's delicious. Look, see all of the little bits? That's what you want. You want those crunchy, crunchy brown, yes, yes, caramelized yes, yes. turkey roll. It is so good. <laughs> I love that you're so excited about food. It okay. Is so good. Okay, so I would normally do this on a Friday, right? Yeah. And then it's gonna be cold when it goes into the salad. So right now for And it still be crispy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be totally Ooh. crispy, but it'll be colder. I use the turkey that has no nitrates, no fillers. So it's just read your labeling. For sure, 100 percent Read definitely. Read the labels and make sure what's inside of your turkey. Because sometimes they'll put in broth, they'll put in nitrates, fillers. they'll put fillers in. I don't do that. Okay, so now we're gonna put in the turkey. Okay. This is, yes, just throw it in. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this, this is our best part! <laughs> La -di -da -da. Okay. okay, here we go. Now, and there's more! And there's more, because you need crunch. Uh, I'm all about the crunch. You need I the crunch. I love like roasted chickpeas or croutons or yes. veggie sticks. So you can either use veggie sticks mm. or you can use taco chips. Or both. Or both. Or both. So, you ready? We're going to crunch. Okay. So you open those and I'm going to crunch these and toss it in? Yes. Just crunch them into like tiny little things. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much fun. Okay, here we go. And then again with a colour. With a colour. You have an idea. We're going we're gonna to put the dressing in and then we're going to toss it. Okay. You have no idea what this is going to taste like. You're going to like... Oh, I cannot wait. Do you see how it's not like a like a runny salad dressing? It's, it's a it's on the thick side. It looks yes. like a runny egg yolk consistency. <laughs> no, but the consistency, right, would be a runny egg yolk. Yes. Okay. Now we need to get mix tongs it. and yes. toss it up. <laughs> right. Mix it. This is so good. All right. Here we go. In we go. Okay. okay. Here we go. Ah. Oh. Do you see? Do you see all the bits coming together? Oh Look my at gosh. all those oh colors. Gosh. Oh just. My gosh. Oh my gosh. This is going to be so good. This is a very big salad. So when you have, yes. a, if you have a big family or, you know, when you're back to having company again. Absolutely. a large crowd. And you could use any yeah. dressing you like. You could use any dressing. Yep. Just use. You know, in, in, in California, they, there's the Russian. You could do the Russian dressing. A lot of people like that. This looks Amazing, ah. Abby. Are we gonna eat this now? Yes, I want to. Okay, let's right go. Now. <laughs> let's go get a bowl. Some for you. Some for me. Yeah. And I'm so excited. This is like right up my alley. You it's have to get the turkey bits. Okay, so I'm trying to get the turkey bits. Get the turkey bits. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, go. Ooh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so good. This is amazing, Abby. Excuse me while I stop my face. While you do that, I'm going to do this. For this recipe and more, go to kosher.com. The Zman Aviv, but sunny side up. <laughs> Was that good? Um, we're talking about like. Yeah, so we're gonna. Psh. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Do not, <laughs> <laughs> do not use that. <laughs> this is the best part. For the camera. For the camera. What? What? Now, as COVID rates continue to drop and life returns to somewhat broad form of normal, new students are arriving from abroad to study here in Israel for the first time 
in what feels like forever. I went to Ben Gurion Airport to welcome the first flight to arrive. Since 1972, Jewish National Fund's USA's Alexander Muss High School in Israel has stood out as one of the premier Israeli academic institutions for students studying abroad. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions, JNF was forced to suspend its spring semester for the first time in the school's history until today. JNF, in collaboration with Al Al Airlines, is one of the first Israeli organizations to receive approval from the Israeli government to bring over 240 students to live and study here in Israel for the first time in 2021. So this is the Alexander Muss High School in Israel program of Jewish National Fund United States where we are bringing teens from around the world, predominantly at the moment from the United States, but it's become a global program and they're coming from everywhere to Israel to continue the academic studies at the highest level and at the same time soak in Zionism and the love for Israel and their heritage. This last year was uh, much anticipation and a lot of hard work on behalf of a lot of people. Sometimes the Jewish people know how to all work together. So uh, this was a great opportunity where the hero is Zohar Vlotsky, who's a Kakal emissary working with JNF. And it's a great example of when all the different organizations start to work together. Having them come, there's no incoming planes, people cannot come to Israel yet from abroad, but everyone came together, all these partners gathered, so we could bring them all here today, and we succeeded. So this is the first of many more to come. We've got a marvelous campus in Hoda Sharon. Uh, we have four dormitories that have been prepared for months for the kids to arrive. They've been uh, on their way since January. And we've got teachers and general studies teachers and a whole team of faculty that are ready to show them Israel. They will be here uh, for a semester and uh, they will study here, uh, uh, Israel studies and general studies. And uh, they will uh, not only will be at the classes, they will go all over Israel because our real classes is Israel. So uh, we are uh, going to uh, travel and to learn about around 4,000 years of uh, Jewish history and Jewish identity. I've been waiting months to do this program, but I'm just so excited to meet new people and make new relationships and also just explore Israel and travel the entire country. So I'm really excited to be with the class. This is the trip we've been waiting for our entire high school and elementary school. Um, I've been at this school since kindergarten and it's a huge experience for everyone to go on the HSI trip senior year. Um, I'm excited to, to hike and go to the beach and to do group bonding activities. It's something we've been waiting for a while, and now that we're finally here, it's, it's a little bit surreal, but we're excited. Everybody put your hands in the air, you just don't get, woo! Welcome to Israel! That's all for today's Good Week Israel. Hope we've helped you start your week off with a smile. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh, and see you next week.